In this tutorial, we'll be covering how to use user attributes in the Snatchbot platform. Now, user attributes are essentially unique information that allows you to further personalize the experience your user has with the chatbot and to build stronger, more complex flows that really do have that full personalized experience. So to get started, select My Bots from the left-hand menu and then select the chatbot that you wish to edit. In this case, we'll use HealthBud. Now there are two different types of attributes. The first being Facebook attributes and the second being custom attributes. So to show you, bring you down to this little section that I've created to simulate a subscription. Now what we have here is a Facebook attribute. Now these are easily accessible with this drop down here. You can do a get attribute, which is something different, and we'll cover that a little bit later. You can do a change attribute, which we'll also come back to. And you can also, as you see here, all these different Facebook things for what it pulls in. Facebook first name, as you can see, right has right there, will automatically pull in the user's first name, profile, picture, location, and all sorts of things depending on the level of consent that they've provided through Facebook. It's very easy to use, but also very powerful and can really help you shape the chatbot experience that your user has. Now the next kind are the custom variables, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but I'll walk you through it. Now, essentially to set these up, where you're going to want to first look is under the configure tab. Now you'll see in each one, there's attribute key and attribute value. Key is simply the name that you give this attribute or this thing that you're looking to track. The value is something that you can define whether through an alphanumeric method, or you can also draw on past inputs from a user. So there are a few different ways that you can use it. Let's say that I wanted to use the attribute of a phone number that they had previously entered. In that case, I would say phone and I want to call back the response to a different interaction. So this is the way I would do it. Response to interaction. Then that's going to equal the ID of the actual interaction that you would do. So if I had an interaction that I actually wanted to put it to, I would put the name, but for reference, we're just going to put ID. And in terms of the fallback, you simply write fallback, then what you want it to say. I'll say that. Now, that would allow us to do it with the response from a previous interaction. Let's say we wanted to get phone from a phone extraction. It's just a simple tw tweak. Instead of response to, we're going to write extracted data. And then the interaction ID, which is the number that shows up with each one, beside each interaction from where I had extracted, in this case, the data. Now, next, you can also define the attribute value with the value of another attribute. To do that, if in this case, if we wanted to do it with the phone number still, you would simply write attribute equals key. And in the case of key, you would write the other attribute key that you want to define this one as. And finally, you can show a variable by writing show ver key. Show ver equals key. And with this, you can enter the variable data into your attribute. So how would you actually go about using all of this? Here's a situation where it would be very helpful is if you have some sort of newsletter and you want someone to subscribe to it. So what I've built here is a little mechanism. If you go back to bot message, you can see here that we've had someone with the Facebook name and in my configuration, 
you can see I've set subscribed equals undefined. That means that we don't necessarily know that value and want to set it up to be set. And to do this, you would simply type subscribed under attribute key and then undefined or whatever you would like as that placeholder under the attribute value. Now from there, I've linked out to yes please or no thanks with quick replies in response to this question. Now, this is where you would end up if you said yes. As you can see, what we have here is a command that will set the attribute to subscribed, meaning yes. So once this has been passed through and the user has gone through this interaction, this attribute will be associated as yes to them. Conversely, you can see that if someone didn't want to, set attribute would be subscribed as no. And from there, I have some very valuable information. Now, there are a few other ways that attributes can be sent. First is through a JSON interaction. So I'll pop that up. And just write JSON attribute. And under bot message, you can select the attribute from the drop down. Here you can see kind of the Facebook general ones, or you can do subscribed. Now you can also do this with webhooks. For example, if we went back and under connections, dropping down to webhooks, and you can select the interaction from there. In this case, subscribed. So how do you actually go about using this? Well, as we're doing this for a subscription, broadcast would be very useful. Now using the broadcast, first select that chatbot, and then we're going to select show filters and plus attribute, and that attribute subscribed equals yes. Then we'll select apply. And as you can see, that narrows it down to that individual broadcast so that if I wanted to send out a newsletter blast, it would only go to those people who have actively subscribed. Next, and finally, you can also use this when pulling reports. So to do so, we'll select reports from the left-hand tab. And then you can see all of the different parameters here. I'll just say all interaction types, bot statement, extracted data type, this is where I would go and I would select attributes. And I'm going to apply that. And as you can see, that shortens down the list just to the users who would have interacted and had this set to yes as subscribed. And with that, that brings us to the end and should have you up and running using the powerful functions that the user attributes function in Snatchbot allows. Thank you for watching and hope this has you well on your way.